is Pikmin 5 in development right now? I think there's very compelling evidence to believe that it is. But before we get into the really fine detail of this, we need to address the Emperor Bulblacks in the room. Last year, before Pikmin 4 released to wonder and acclaim, I made a video in which I made some big forecasts. In fact, it was the first major forecast I made on this channel. I've always said that I want Nintendo forecasts to be not just for whim, hip shoot predictions, but researched, measurable, accountable forecasts. That's why I express specific forecasts as percentage likelihoods and not just a crystal ball tick list of things I think are likely to happen. Basically, I said that the days of long Pikmin droughts could well be over. The video is still up, so feel free to watch it, but basically I was saying that the long delays were caused, at least in part, by a production bottleneck as the same team that handled Pikmin also took care of the vastly more profitable 2D Mario series. With the Mario Makers and Super Mario Brothers games to produce, Pikmin was always likely to be an afterthought for EPD10, the developers. The change was the choice to contract developers Aiting for Pikmin 3 Deluxe, which provided an external studio with experience in putting together Pikmin games and even developing their own content for the extras. I made two researched, measurable, accountable forecasts. First, I said there was a 70% likelihood that Aiting would be involved in the development of Pikmin 4. As it turned out, yes, they were involved in Pikmin 4. We'll go into the extent of their involvement in a second, but at minimum they worked on it, and that was the extent of the forecast. I gave a second prediction at a 50% likelihood that they were the primary developers of the new game, still supervised by Takashi Tezuka's internal development team, EPD10. My logic here was essentially that a Super Mario Bros. game seemed like it would be such an obvious tentpole title for holiday 2023 that I thought that, under normal circumstances, this would take precedence over a new Pikmin title. But clearly Pikmin 4 had been announced, which meant that they must have found an external developer giving them the option to produce both. Well, apparently EPD10 found the capacity to do both titles as Super Mario Wonder was released only a few months later, making it about a year for EPD10. I also had a separate video put as a high 70% or thereabouts likelihood that the next 2D Mario would release before 2025, and of course it did. Look, the point of these predictions isn't just to get a clean sweep of ticks, but rather it's to try and make a 70% prediction accurate 70% of the time, a 50% prediction accurate 50% of the time, and so on. In other words, the numbers should have a genuine meaning, but it will remain to be seen over the years how accurate I really am with these forecasts over the long haul. That's the accountable part of researched, measurable, and accountable forecasts. Still, if you'll excuse me marking my own homework, so far, so good. So now, let's go deeper. My central argument still stands. Eating are being cultivated as a studio who can take the heavy lifting off of the core development team in Kyoto. They may not take on Pikmin wholesale in the way Mercury Steam took on Metroid or Next Level Games shoulders Luigi's Mansion, but the Pikmin 4 credits give us a really strong idea of just how important Eating were to the development of the game. So let's really get deep into this. First, I looked at the credits for Pikmin 3 Deluxe where Eating staff are helpfully categorised separately. Then I compared these with Pikmin 4. Some of these people weren't credited again a second time, and a few of them were listed only as special thanks, the credit's so broad, it could be just about anything, and so I haven't included it. But I count 24 people who had roles on Pikmin 3 Deluxe, and went on to have a role in Pikmin 4, a majority of the 18 Pikmin 3 Deluxe team. What this shows is that 18 weren't doing less work on Pikmin 4, there was simply more to do. But let's look at these 24 names. I'm putting on screen right now the list of people, but more importantly also, their credits. Take a look. Do these job titles look like small deals to you? Granted, multiple people are credited as leads for different departments and Pikmin 4 has a very large number of people listed, well over 300 people. But I don't have a credit list for other 18 games to work out how many of these people were also 18 employees, not credited on Pikmin 3. And of course, many of these people are producers, translators and roles that are important but less senior on the project, modelling landscapes, testing and so on. I'm not saying that 18 employees were the men and women behind the curtain shepherding Pikmin 4 to the outsized hit it has become, at least in the Japanese market. Very clearly the bulk of these employees are still from EPD, and a very generous array of partner studios listed in the credits who helped the project along. Still, Nintendo values experience, and there are now at least two dozen employees at 18 who now have a substantial track record of developing Pikmin across a number of key roles. Just as Splatoon development has been greatly assisted by the input of Bandai Namco employees, 
meaning that the franchise has scored three entries in less than a decade, I can see Ating being the ace in the hole for EPD-10 that allow them to keep the show on the road while not neglecting the more profitable 2D Mario franchise. None of this would make a difference if Pikmin 4 were a commercial flop, or even if it only achieved lukewarm success. But while the headline figures internationally might not set tongues a wagging, the fact that Pikmin 4 hit a cool million sales in Japan and seemingly outcompeted Tears of the Kingdom in the holiday quarter in Japan just shows that the little Pikmin have outsized impact on the game's market. If Miyamoto was restless for the Pikmin to be pushed to the forefront before, one can only imagine him being even more indefatigable now. Especially when Nintendo's franchises are more valuable than ever as they consider broader ways to exploit the properties than simply producing more video games. Now, Pikmin is not Splatoon. Multiple entries on a single system would, I'm sure, be overkill. Ubisoft were warned by Nintendo that for many franchises, one entry per generation would be sufficient and that oversaturation would probably lead to disappointment. This prediction, it seems, came to pass when sales of Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope initially disappointed despite a plum October release date, but Pikmin 5 will be squarely targeting the next generation, so no issues there. Could EPD-10 spare the capacity? Let's do another credits deep dive. If we look at the people who worked on both Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Pikmin 4, there are a lot of names. But let's take out the senior producers. I'm talking anyone above production manager Hirokyuki Kimura, so people like overall producer Takashi Tezuka, and all the way up to Shantura Fukawa, whose name is literally on every single title Nintendo put out. Doing this, we whittle it down slightly. Once we then remove testers and localizers whose job may not be specific to one game, or even one development team, the numbers now fall right down. In fairness, let's again remove anyone who has a special thanks credit, because we don't really know what specifically they contributed. Once you whittle it down, I make it an even dozen. Twelve names, out of the hundreds and hundreds of people who worked on Pikmin 4, and the slightly smaller but still large number of people who worked on the Super Mario Bros. Wonder pulled double duty on both games. Of course, that shouldn't be surprising. Most of us can't create one genius god-tier level game in our lifetimes, let alone two at once, but it is a testament to the fact that the Pikmin and Super Mario Bros. development groups are now no longer joined at the hip, but in fact are largely free and walking around Kyoto getting coffee. And let's take a closer look at the roles that this dynamic doesn't have in the Super Mario Wonders firmament. Unlike the 18 credits, these are very much support roles, part of larger teams. It's very easy to imagine how landscape designers could, in the interest of efficiency, bounce back and forth between two live projects at once. What I'm saying is, the old rules no longer apply. Pikmin 5's development is barely, if at all, contingent on the development of Super Mario Bros. games, or Super Mario Maker, or any of that ilk. Is there any reason for Nintendo then to wait to develop a new Pikmin game? Yes, they always like to have new ideas, and they appear to have torn up ideas and started over when the ideas weren't quite strong enough in the past. This certainly appears to explain why Shigeru Miyamoto promised Pikmin 4 about seven years before it finally appeared. Clearly, there was a design for the game which didn't end up being made. But these kinds of unforeseen delays to games are, well, unforeseen. The intention, even then, seems to have been to move to a new project, and now that Pikmin is finally in the category of small but respectable sellers for the big end, I see no benefit in delay. Another reason to hold off would be the development of Pikmin 4 DLC. Friend of the channel Vantage Emblem has done a super video recently looking at the specific likelihood of Pikmin 4 DLC, which I'll link at the top, and which looks into this in a lot more detail, but suffice to say at this point, I think that while it's not impossible, it's relatively unlikely that we'll see Pikmin 4 DLC, at least in the traditional form. However, the presence of Aiting as a support studio again can only help here, because essentially what Aiting did, adding content to Pikmin 3 Deluxe, is the same kind of thing that they will be doing in developing DLC, and since they handled with a high degree of autonomy the Pikmin 3 game, it would make sense for Aiting staff to be tasked with developing Pikmin 4 DLC if it were to happen, while the core team at EPD-10 map out the mechanics of the next title. Ultimately though, I think the next title is the way of the future. I don't think they want to hold back and keep going with Pikmin 4 when they could be developing something new. A standard development cycle for a new game would be three to four years, but of course delays and perfectionism could push this further. Nintendo is comfortable waiting longer times if they think they can make a game truly polished, and I think they really care about making each Pikmin game count. Super Mario Bros. Wonder was 11 years in the oven after all, but 
In that time, we did see two Maker games and Super Mario Run, so the reports of Super Mario Bros. hiatus are somewhat exaggerated. Okay then, let's look at some specific forecasts. Will there be a new mainline Pikmin? Pikmin 5 or Pikmin Echoes or Pikmin Sunshine or whatever it might be called before the end of 2027? I give this a 70% chance. What about if we extended the window to the end of 2029, giving it a generous six-year production window? I'm going with 90% chance. I really think the next console will have a Pikmin game in its midlife. And let's be honest, this is only controversial because we know that Pikmin 3 and Pikmin 4 had such massive delays. But I really am super optimistic now that all those delays are things of the past, that the old excuses just don't apply anymore. This is a successful franchise with an established development team and a hungry fan base. Set the clock. Pikmin 5 is coming relatively soon. If you enjoyed this video and want to support forecasts like this, or just want to come back to see if I embarrass myself and it all blows up on my face, hitting the subscribe button is the kind of wise and benevolent move I've come to expect from you. Take care and stay cool. Thank you so much for watching.